Just about 3,000 pounds on the nose. We have a Rove 170 rear kitchen here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Just came in on trade. And amazingly enough, right now, we actually have our last one of these new in stock, also a 2018. Effectively, we have a brand new version identical to this thing at the time of this filming that strangely came through $500 less because the boss decided it was time for it to go and put it up as a price leader. So if you like what you see here, I can get you a brand new one with a warranty for a couple hundred bucks less. And if that one sells, then this is the one that I have remaining. Again, just because the boss decided he'd rather take a loss on that new one than, you know, hold on to it any longer. Meanwhile, you have this one here that is in pretty darn nice shape itself. And the only reason it's here is because the previous owner decided they wanted a little more room, but they were happy enough with their passport. They stayed in the passport family, swapping it out instead for a uh, 19RB Passport Elite. And a quick look at it in travel mode with the slide closed reveals that it remains travel functional. You see that the uh, your dining table, you just need to maybe slide up there on the bed. There's different ways you can secure that. Your dinette, you can fold up a little bit out of the way here so that it reveals a, a nice walkthrough space. And that's what's cool. You don't need the uh, the slide out to really use this floor plan. It just makes using the floor plan much better because once again, you can effectively use your horizontal bed space as functional utility space in transit. Um, I'm going to do something I don't normally do just because this thing is a hard part for part match with the brand new one that we have on hand. I'm going to walk through and give you a, uh, a sort of look at the, the surface shape and condition of this so that we can see there's no blemishes. And then for full information, I'm actually just going to drop a copy of our fully uh, informative walkthrough video tour at the end of this here. So to begin with our little surface inspection here, take a look at the seating. You know, a small RV has limited seating capacity, so it will tend to get higher use per seat than a bigger RV. And that's kind of what I think is a good thing about this one, because you can see how, you know, your cushions and everything aren't all broken down. Now, something I don't know if I show in my full informative tour is how this bench right here actually does have a little lift top for storage below it. This one does not, however. Your actual slide mechanism and track is actually hidden under that bench. So the bench is actually acting like protective fascia for it. Speaking of fascia, I also don't see any sort of surface scars on any of the cabinetry, the slide fascia, anything like that. Everything in this is in good working order. Air, heat, microwave, all that stuff. Um, the uh, mattress doesn't look like it was really used a whole heck of a lot either. And I'm not seeing scuffs on the front side of the bed base here where somebody like scooted in and out with a pair of jeans. And you know the little rivets on the jeans, how they sometimes will grab onto something? I don't see any damage from any of that. All the cabinetry looks good. I'm not seeing any scars and scabs, anything like that. Even inside the cabinets where maybe they had something too big that shifted around. The original uh, TV is all here. Uh, your remote controls for your TV and your DVD, or uh, pardon me, Bluetooth stereo system as it were, which is what we're looking at up here. All this stuff is still present and accounted for. All the LED lights lighten up like champs the way that they're supposed to. Here in the bathroom, if you want to call it that. <laughs> this is the 3S closet. You can do the 3S's in here. I don't know if it's large enough to do all three at the same time. So that would be uh, sit, S-I-T, shower, and shave. Although there are certainly some members of our armed forces who will uh, say that my version of the 3S's is not the generally accepted version, but understand I am attempting to be professional here and, and speak to the public. <laughs> um, you know, again, fridge. The, there's a mini freezer in that that lights right up. Furnace is in great shape. Stove top that's recessed into the counter. First of all, it's nice for that extra prep space. But that, all the appliances, everything here is just in good working order. And hey, we've got convection. One note on the history of this RV, that is not actually its original awning hardware. That is something that we replaced here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan, which is actually uh, really about the only reason that the folks swapped out of this. They wanted a little more room, but uh, they had a little glitch with the original awning that was on it, and it was something that Keystone backed up right away. But unfortunately, the dealership from whom they purchased this originally, because it's not a Halet bought unit, they just weren't willing to like do any work for their own client who bought this from them. 
So they said, you know what? Forget that. They got on the internet, found another passport dealer, found us. We said, not only are we willing to work on it, and the guy said, well, you know, we were thinking of getting something maybe a little bit bigger in a couple years anyway. We appreciate that you're willing to work on it. I feel better about swapping out an RV with someone like you who stands behind products you didn't even sell versus the kind of place that will sell them and still not stand behind them. So that's kind of the, the history of how she got here. Now, the, the trailer needs a bath, as you can tell by the, the snow. It's a little bit chilly here in the Midwest right now, and there's a little road grime and stuff. I believe this RV is scheduled for an in and out cleaning that has not yet taken place, which is part of the reason this is actually parked out behind our building right now, so that it's getting ready to go into that shop over there to be quality inspected, just to make sure there's no additional little surprises of which we weren't aware. Now, we are representing presenting this RV in good working order. It will be in good working order when you take it home. Down here, you've got a class two receiver hitch, which is a one inch receiver. That is there suitable to be something like a spare tire holder. You could use it uh, for a, uh, a bike rack carrier, all kinds of fun little things like that. Now we do have uh, four corner stabilizer jacks to keep this thing steady. You do have a gas grill quick connect for grilling outside. And again, other than just a little bit of uh, dirt for my boots here, which we're gonna go through and clean off at, at some point, uh, she is in pretty fair shape and order. So it's in kind of a funky spot. I wasn't able to get like really nice camera work around this thing, apologies for that. But you can see that other than needing in a bath, this thing's in great shape. And now, stay tuned for a more informative walkthrough if you're interested to really learn about the features and benefits of the little passport row here at Haywood RV. 3,060 pounds, this is a Keystone Passport Rove 170 rear kitchen here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Um, before you just roll your eyes and say, oh my gosh, another manufacturer building this kind of concept again, give it a chance because that was exactly my first response. Um, years ago, we were an RPOD dealer, and anyone who says they weren't the originator of this concept, they're drunk. I mean, that's obviously the truth. By the way, if you want to see if we have this in stock and available, all you need to do is visit the link in our uh, video description that says check for price and availability. And you can see what we have, how much we're asking, um, any specs that are available. We don't do hidden fees. We publish pricing. Um, you know, we, we put everything right out there for you. So back to the, uh, the task at hand. The, you know, the, the concept of this being a Johnny Come Lately product. Um, you know, you don't have to be the original to be very good at something is another thing I like to stress. But the first time, like we were an RPOD dealer and then Winnebago came out with the uh, Winnie Drop, now called the Mini Drop. And uh, we were like, great, we like to have an A, B choice of anything. Sewer hose caddy there, by the way, four corner stabilizer jacks. You saw the large storage compartment, the solar prep up front. Um, so we have an A and a B choice here at Halet RV. And then Jayco says, oh yeah, now we have the Hummingbird. And it's another six and a half wide, uh, you know, type thing just like this. And I'm like, oh man, do we need three of these things? So we turned to our service department and said, okay, which one's the problem, child? And the service manager says, uh, none of them. We don't have problems with our pods, Winnie Drops, or uh, the Hummingbirds. We're like, huh, okay. So we, we let it go for a sale season. We said, okay, which, which one's going to sink or swim? And just the way that it worked out at our dealership, and I'm not saying anything's a bad product, but the, the Hummingbird and the Winnie Drop proved to be the more popular options. So we said, okay, no problem. Great, we have two things, we're happy with that. Then a year later, Keystone announces the Passport Rove, which means, you know, Rover, Wanderer, by the way, that's where the name comes from, because that's gonna throw people off. Um, and my knee-jerk reaction was, oh, I'm gonna roll my eyes and say, great, another one of these things. But you know what I did? I gave it a fair chance. I put all that aside and I said, what is here? Do, is, there some, is, is this really just a copycat clone? Or did they go about it a little different way? Does it stand on its own feet? And after I walked through the product, I said, you know what? There is enough here. Obviously these things are similar. It's only a 17 foot box at six and a half foot wide. They can't be ter terribly original. But I walked through this and said, there's enough here unique that I really think it does have its own identity. And it caught me right away with this front end. I like the shape of it. I like that it's not that teardrop shape. I like that this has more of a flat linear roof profile um, on the uh, interior because a linear roof as opposed to a very 
uh, tapered teardrop roof, this actually lets you include things like overhead cabinets that a radius roof does not. And then obviously that front windshield. I immediately saw that and went, oh, oh, that's sharp. I like that they did that different. So I start walking around it a little bit more. And I see some things I've seen other places, but really what they did here is they said, okay, who else builds anything like this? We are going to cherry pick the very best parts of all of it. We're going to put it into one camper. And I think they accomplished that, actually. Um, you know, you've got all uh, LED lighting, both inside and out. So LED tail lighting, to give you an idea, at 60 miles an hour, that'll give the person behind you up to five feet of additional stopping time because the light fires that much faster. It's enough that at 60 miles per hour it makes a difference. Now where I'm standing you can't really see but there's actually a really cool um, like marker light uh, trim up there. It kind of looks sort of like a little spoiler effect type thing. These tow extremely well which is where the name Rove Wander comes from. Um, these little with the axles actually being wider than the body of the camper. If you have a very reduced capacity vehicle or if you just don't want to tow something big this will handle extremely nicely behind you. We have all aluminum framework. We have a laminated uh, roof section, a one-piece uh, roof that actually wraps around the entire thing. So you don't have uh, you know, rubberized roofing to tackle here. Um, we've got laminated aluminum frame walls, floor. Uh, you see that we've got a full outside shower, not just a cold water spray port on the Rove here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Um, I like that they went with the uh, one inch class two receiver hitch back here. So that if you, uh, you notice by the way, that it has a tongue mounted spare tire. That helps with load equalization. That will help this tow more nicely going down the road. Weight up front is better than weight in the back. Um, talk to any guy who's ever loaded a boat wrong and he'll confirm that for you. Uh, again, I like the four corner stabilizer jacks. I've seen some that only have uh, uh, two rear stabilizers, so the front knows where you're sleeping gets wiggly. Don't like that. Now, your awning here is different. That's another more unique quality on this. I went, ooh, ooh, I like what they did there. They went that, um, you know, Thule crown awning. Now, you see this often even used on the back of, like, uh, the, the toy haulers, like the Keystone Fusion that we use here at Halid RV. It's an easy crank-out awning. It took, I think, five seconds, and I had it cranked all the way out. You can roll it back in the same amount of time. It does have full-length LED lighting at the base. On a non-windy day like today, what I like about it is being a tall goofball, I don't have to deal with that potential of bashing my forehead into awning arms. It's an armless awning. However, if it is a little bit windy, there actually are support arms built right into it that mount against the side of the trailer here. And you can tilt that a little bit if you need just a little bit of water runoff. So it does do a lot of good things there. It does some things that other potential awnings can't do. So there's, there's advantages in different ways to different things. You saw the large front pass-through storage. Not just front storage, but pass-through. That's exceptionally rare in this pseudo teardrop classification that you see here. The profile of this thing is great looking. It's going to tow like a dream. You know, if you've got like a minivan or something. Now, not every minivan can tow. I don't want to just say, oh, you've got a minivan, you can handle this. The right minivan can handle this, and obviously bigger SUVs and on their way up. Um, grill connection back here. So if you do want to do some cooking outside, you can fire it right up. Uh, if you want to can uh, cook away from this or not cook under the awning, you can just get an extended hose to hook up. And they didn't waste any space on this. Everything they could do, they opened up. It's easy to access with the magnetic latching baggage doors that you see right here. Bigger entry handle. And of course, it's all protected with Keystone's uh, three-year structural warranty. Um, so, you know, this has been a brand, Keystone as a whole, but especially Passport, has been a brand that we have truly come to appreciate here at Halid RV for the quality build of their products. Our guys like selling them because they don't come back to haunt our salesmen. This product will stay in your driveway, doesn't come back to mind. Look at that little starfish uh it looks like helicopter blade uh, right, uh aluminum wheel that's cool so strutted door so it doesn't slam open um this is an above the floor slide out so that means that this is a carpetless easy cleaning camper um you know there, again this is not necessarily like a terribly original layout we have layouts like this in the rockwood geo pro the jaco hummingbird the winnebago uh winnie drop but obviously, guys, we saw enough redeeming quality here that we thought this, this is on par. This can play with the established players in this market. 
And it was, uh, it wasn't this floor plan, it was the first one I walked in. It was, uh, the, the rear bathroom. But the first thing I noticed in that one is it had a bigger, deeper slide and more countertop space. I'm like, oh, that's really sharp. And then I got really caught up on, uh, these really good looking, um, Euro style radius cabinets. I'm like, oh, that's sharp. And I started noticing that they're all, um, you know, hidden hinges and, and you don't have, uh, you know, uh, struts to pinch your fingers and stuff like that. I'm like, this is, this is sharp. They put a lot of lights in here. That's something I like. I like that they really brightened it up in here. I like the light dark contrast. Um, there are no doubt different decors available. This is called Driftwood. This shares decors with the rest of the Passport family that we carry here at Halid RV, Driftwood being the most popular of them. The table here is free floating. You can take it out and use it like a picnic table. You can fold that down and turn the u dinette into a sleeper. That's one of the nice parts about this is this can fold down into a, a comfortable adult sleeper right here if need be. This right here, there is a lift up compartment to get to what looks like storage, but it's actually uh, like wiring and whatnot. There is storage below that bench over there. Um, I like the big cross breeze window. All your windows have shades and specifically that front window which is something that is uh, pretty unique to this series here. Uh, something that I lovingly refer to as the K-Pod, the Keystone Pod if you will. <laughs> so AM FM, uh, uh, Bluetooth stereo type system right here. It's got all sorts of, if you want to Add high def appliances to this. There are hookups for that. You can actually place hands-free calls through this. You can see the the, the call answer and, and disconnect button. So we've got a you know swing out TV. It, it faces the dining area so that when you're sitting down having a meal, it's at the perfect uh, position. You can obviously fold it back out of the way. Ooh, that swing arm's not kidding. Awesome. I like that it's not junk. Um, so you can uh, take a look at it in bedtime. But it's this little stuff they did. It's a tiny thing, guys, but it's everything. The way that they actually added a little uh, um, shelf right there. Now, obviously, you could do a better job of running that coax cable so it's not hanging in the way, but that's a little thing. It's not really going to stop you. But they actually gave you a place to like put an alarm clock, to put a phone. Um, you can get a thinner Traveler CPAP machine that'll work right there pretty well. So it's those little touches they did. More light, more windows, more airflow. Uh, it, it makes all the difference. I like the big closet right here, so you can actually keep this thing packed up. And you do have some nice drawer space right here. You know, socks, underwear, all that. Power outlets next to any sleeping space, by the way. So you can, again, charge phones, CPAPs, those things. Now, a lot of brands who build a floor plan similar to this will have a cutaway alcove internally. I actually like that they didn't do that. I like that they gave... That's the reason this has a full pass-through storage instead of a blocked-off storage. Um, flip it around. Again, I like that carpetless, easy cleaning nature of things. Uh, we've got a convection microwave and a uh, gas electric traveler's friendly fridge, but it's built into the slide out. It gets it off the floor plan so that you actually have extra countertop, extra cabinet space, extra prep space here. Did you notice those twin appliance outlets against that rear wall right next to the countertop? They're just begging you to throw the coffee maker or blenders or whatever you need back here. You can do all that. Nicer things where they need to be too. Again, they're very good about smart material selection within the Passport family, like the nicer stainless sink. And I like that they recess the stove to give you some prep space here. There's good space. They didn't waste anything. You see that can actually pass from inside to outside right there. You're not wasting anything. No ounce of space gone to waste in the Passport Rove. Now as I flip around something I didn't really point out previously, right below your command center is your, um, you've got a very nice like entry pantry area right here. And again, this floor plan, not terribly original, but very well executed. It doesn't have to be the original to be very good. That's what I like about this. It's uh, very light. It's very well constructed. It comes from a brand for which I have the utmost of confidence. I think these guys nailed it. Um, if uh, if you like everything you see here, but you're like, ah, dang it, I don't like those wet bathrooms. No big deal. You give us a call. We'll get you in the 170 rear bathroom instead of the 170 rear kitchen passport rove here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. If uh, you need Pitching, pieces, parts, trades, financing, truck and trailer package deals, anything and everything in between. Halet RV only does everything. So, doesn't matter what it is, guys. And it doesn't matter where you live because there is no one too far away to work with Halet RV. We only do everything here. And I really encourage you, give it a fair, honest shake. I always recommend people uh, take a three-step process. First, find the floor plan you like. 
So let's say you identify this rear kitchen floor plan here. Then find the brands that build it. Like I said, I've got Jayco's, I've got Keystone's, I've got Winnebago's. Now learn the differences between them. I look at products for a living. This is my full-time job. And I looked at that and I said, this is a player. This is a true player who can stand up next to anything else that builds anything like this. I have confidence in this thing. I think it's going to do well. I encourage you to do your own research and form your own opinions. But uh, I, I, where I originally sighed and shook my head and said it's a Johnny come lately, I really, I really did a 180 on that. And I said, you know what? Maybe they're not the newest player to the game, but they might be one of the strongest. So with that, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.